Hi and welcome to Why It Matters, a podcast series from The Straits Times where we take a close look at one news story every week. My name is Jeremy Aoyong. This week, of all the on-again, off-again topics we have to discuss, we will talk about the high-speed rail between KL and Singapore. And with me to talk about this, I have Deputy Political Editor Roy Stensim. Hi, Roy. Hey, Jeremy. And Transport Correspondent Adrian Lim. Hi, Jeremy. Okay, so this was supposed to be our marquee project, the one that would transform Singapore and Malaysia. And suddenly, abruptly, it got cancelled. For everybody who has not really kept up with this, Roy, maybe you can start us off by giving us a bit of background, a quick recap of how we got to this stage. You were there at the signing of the agreement, right? Sure, Jeremy. So actually, the project goes a bit back from that. It really sort of crystallised in 2013, you know, when uh, Singapore and Malaysia agreed to have this high-speed rail at the annual leaders' retreat. So things went off, developed from there. Singapore announced that it would have its terminus at Jurong East. And in 2016, which was the press conference I attended, that was when Singapore and Malaysia signed a legally binding agreement to build this high-speed rail by 2026. So this was signed in KL, right? Or Putrajaya? Yes. And just two years ago? Yes, that's right. And then what happened? And then after that, things proceeded. Uh, Tenders were called for firms to you know, build and to run the line and, and things looked to be proceeding quite smoothly. But of course, uh, I think it sort of started to unravel after the new administration took over after the Malaysia general election under Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Soon after taking power, he uh, uh, announced that Malaysia would be scrapping the project to cut costs and then his cabinet agreed to do so. And since then, we are sort of the, the fate of this whole project is sort of up in the air. Okay, so but what was the argument that was put forward when they first agreed to this, say 2013 and 2016? And now their argument is that they need to save money. Yeah, so at that time, uh, this was hailed as a game changer, uh, you know, as a marquee project that would improve connectivity, you know, improve people to people ties between both countries. It would catalyze economic development along the entire corridor, bring in more jobs. I think on Malaysia's side, it was a World Bank report that estimated um, some 110,000 jobs, I believe. And so, you know, there were a lot of benefits that were touted, but for the Mahathir administration, it, it seems like their priority is really to pare down the debt. I think they have a debt of uh, 1.1 trillion ringgit. And so they have been saying that uh, this cost of the line, which I think they, they estimated at 110 billion ringgit, was too high. And so among various major projects that they want to chop, uh, the high-speed rail is one of them. Okay. And what has Singapore's stand been throughout this whole thing? Singapore has always said that we are waiting for official confirmation from Malaysia. So I think on, on the government's part, they don't want to make any moves until there's been official confirmation or official notification from Malaysia. So last Friday, Transport Minister Corbun Wan basically said that uh, Singapore has approached Malaysia to clarify its position on the project and that on Singapore's part, continues to fulfil its part of the agreement and is continuing to incur costs for doing so. So this contract is legally binding and there is a penalty to breaking it? Yes, that's correct. Does anybody actually know how much we're talking about? Well, Dr Mahathir floated the figure of $500 billion and said he wasn't sure if it was in ringgit or Singapore dollars, but uh, the actual terms of the contract and of the agreement, including the penalties, are unclear. Okay, so it may be significantly more than that like if Mr Kovnuan is talking about the cost that we are incurring yes, now. Yes, quite possibly. Okay, and on that cost, Adrian, I guess this is a good time for you to jump in. Do you have a sense on uh, how much Singapore has already put into this? Or I, maybe not in terms of dollars, but what have we done to prepare for this line and uh, what is the impact of, of the cancellation going to be? So for such a massive project, obviously lots of work has already begun for the high-speed rail in Singapore. What people most remember is the acquisition of the Jurong Country Club. Uh, I think it was in 2015. It cost about $90 million. This is to make way for the high-speed rail terminus. So when the high-speed rail comes from KL to Singapore, that will be the final stop in Singapore in Jurong East. So this club is closed now? Yes, this club is acquired. Uh, nobody can go there anymore and of course a lot of the Jurong Country Club members are a bit disappointed now that the high speed rail might not pan out. And what other impact will it have on the Jurong area? So the high speed rail terminus in Singapore was supposed to terminate at Jurong East. That was actually part of a plan to uh, develop the whole Jurong area into Singapore's second central business district, what we were going to call the Jurong Lake District. What is going to happen in Jurong Lake District now? Is, will these plans go forward or do we not know? 
No, I believe the plans were already envisioned by the URA, the Urban Redeve- Redevelopment Authority, back in 2008 for Jurong Lake District to be this vibrant place where you work, live and play. And as Roy mentioned, the HSR project was first mooted in 2013, which is much later on. So it was uh, good to have. You know, it will be an extra cream on top of the cake. But uh, even if we don't have the high-speed rail project, I don't think the plans for Jurong Lake District are going to be derailed. But surely there's, there will be some impact on, say, property prices. Were people speculating on housing in that area? Yes, I think reports have said that people have bought condominiums in the area and planned, planned to have it go on block those that were near the site of the HSL terminus in Jurong East. And if you guys can remember, Gunting also built a hotel, I think right. one which has over 550 rooms in the Jurong Lake District, built in 2015. And they were hoping this hotel is going to serve uh, commuters using the HSL. There was this other country, Raffles Country Club was also going to be affected by this or is that a different thing altogether? Uh, yes, Raffles Country Club is supposed to be handed over to the government next month, I believe. But because that would be the place where they will build the at grade tracks for the high-speed rail just before it goes into a 25 meter high bridge to cross over into uh, Johor. And uh, that's also where the high-speed rail train was supposed to go underground and finally connect to the terminus in Jurong East. Do you know if the Raffles Country Club will still be handed over or all this is up in the air? Well, besides the high-speed rail, Raffles Country Club was also going to be uh, acquired for upcoming MRT lines such as the Cross Island Line if I'm not wrong. So uh, that may still continue. Okay, my last question for you guys. I know there's been a lot of talk about the cancellation, but there has been no official notification from Malaysia yet. Given how things work in the world today, how likely do you think that this high-speed rail will actually be a dead project or be resurrected? I think if you take Dr. Mahathir's words as is, then it seems quite likely that the project is going to be cancelled. But uh, it's really still up in the air because until they give us official confirmation of their intent to cancel the project, it's really hard to say where things will go from here because uh, they still probably would face quite a tremendous financial penalty if they decide to scrap it. Whether they're willing to bear that is up for question. And I think Dr. Mahathir himself has left open some wiggle room because in previous press conference, he has said that, that Malaysia plans to scrap the project subject to discussions with Singapore government. So uh, whether those, gov- the, those discussions take place and what comes out of it, I, I, I think it remains uh, open to question. Okay, Adrian, do you want to gamble? Well, I think to, to add on to that, I think besides what Roy is saying, the finance minister Lim Guan Eng has also said, this is the Malaysian finance minister, just to be clear. So Mr. Lim has said that, you know, while they're going to terminate it now, it doesn't mean that this project cannot be revisited in the future. So there may be a chance that when the whole country is in a better financial standing, it could decide to uh, resurrect the HSR again. So um, I think the door is not totally shut yet. Okay. I think that's a good place to leave it. Thanks, Roy, and uh, thanks, Adrian, for joining me today. Thanks for listening. You can read the feature on the winners and losers of the High Speed Rail online at The Straits Times, where you can also find podcasts on various other topics. And if you have any feedback, do email us at podcast at sph.com.sg. Look out for the next episode of Why It Matters next week.